Welcome to video number 13. In this drawing tutorial, I'm going to be doing this uh, main lighthouse. Um, you can't quite see the lighthouse here. This is the house that the lighthouse keeper lives in. And uh, it's going to be an interesting drawing because you can't see the perspective too much, but it's going to be a lot of different values. If you're ready to draw, let's get started. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen how I, I start these drawings. I've gone, I created a grid on my photograph, which is a measure of six and three quarters by 10. And then I transferred that grid to my uh, drawing paper. I've enlarged the picture to 10 by, four, 10 by uh, 14 and a half. And video number four, and I think video number nine explains how I did that if you, uh, wondering how that how what the process is to uh, to scale up a drawing from a photograph i also i have uh, located my different i've located my different uh, elements here starting off with uh, this roof line right here and it's important when you're doing this to find the points uh, it's just going to be rough you know an estimate of where they're at but you want to make sure you're in the right grid. And uh, so I found my, my roof point approximately here in my on top of my roof, which is kind of hidden behind these branches right about up here and connected the two. And then did the same thing with this point right here. Uh, and I'm just kind of guessing where it hit approximately there, connecting that point. And now these lines are almost identical to these and there's going to be a slight difference because of perspective. But uh, I do that throughout the whole drawing. That's how I locate all these different elements. I look and see what frame it's in and then kind of guess where the point one point is, draw it down and uh, just locate it that way. I go into more detail on doing that, I think, in video four. But uh, right now, I've got it sketched in uh, in order to save some time. And I'm going to start uh, adding some uh, graphite, some, give it some dimension. And I think I'll start with, uh, well, actually, I want to start locating where these branches are because they're going to block out some of this building. No sense in... Uh, coloring the, uh, you know, shading the building when I'm going to black it out here. And so I need to kind of just guess where they're at. They're, the tree starts up in here, kind of comes around like that. There's a big branch that comes clear over here. And another one right there. It kind of just touches the top of that. And we come over here. There's another big branch that, uh, comes right through here and then sort of sweeps down and right in there and kind of comes I'm just sort of doing the general outline of where these branches are we're, we're going to do more detail as we get into the drawing but uh, right now I just want to block out these areas so I know that I don't have to put any uh, effort into detailing that area. So they're down here like this. Some more here. There's a big branch that comes right through here and up and over like that. There's a little bit of that building is showing right here. And then the lower part of the branches come down through here. There's a there's one that comes over here like this, right here. And then we've got this uh, ground cover, uh, the weeds and all that stuff. That's and that cuts right uh, right through by and through here. Just kind of like that. I'll just sort of pencil that in. Uh, same thing on this other side. I've got a Part of the branches right there kind of comes over here there's another piece there right there 
right there. Then there's a piece that comes up here like that, comes around. Another piece that comes down here, touches the roof a little bit, comes like that. There's an area that comes over here, comes down right about there. Another part right here, piece right, uh, piece right in there. This is just right down in there, and then there's more. There's a road or a part of the uh, parking lot that sits right here, and there's a lot of brush right in through here. So now we've got uh, pretty much got that sketched in where it's going to be. I want to start off with a. Uh, this time I'm going to start off with a. a uh, the sky here, which we've got the uh, the sea coast is right here. That's the horizon, right there. And uh, I'm going to put in some graphite. And uh, let me pause the uh, video while I do that. And uh, well, I'll leave it on here, and so you can see what I'm doing. That's a, it. Won't take very long. There's not much sky there. Periodically, I'm going to. Uh, stop the video so that we don't spend a lot of time just doing shading and things like that so i'm leaving my grid lines in here you would obviously erase those but i'm going to leave them in here just uh, so you can see where everything is at let's see come over there like that pick up a little bit more of this and I'm going to shade over the areas that are getting uh, a tree branch because we want we want that area. There's going to be parts of that that's going to show through. And let's see, we know it comes right there, right there, now all the way down to here. Now. At this point, I can, I'm going to blend it a little bit more, more here with some, just a plain cotton ball with nothing, no, uh, no graphite on it. In case you didn't see one of the earlier videos, I'm using powdered graphite here. You can get that at almost any art store. And if you don't have an art store in your area, you can actually make it just take some sandpaper and a, and a uh, drawing pencil and sand off some of it on, onto a piece of paper and you've got uh, powdered graphite. So let me put this over here. Now at this point, I want to pick out a few light areas with, uh, they've got some, oh, it's not, it's clouds, but they're just so thin that they're, they're not really what you'd think of as regular clouds. They're very wispy. So we're just going to kind of brush those in with a kneaded eraser. You could either use a kneaded eraser or you could use the flat part of the uh, pink pearl, which are much more accessible. You can find these at any place that sells school supplies. Whereas a kneaded eraser, you probably have to uh, go to a uh, to an art store for that. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I'm going to uh, add some value here, some some. Uh, graphite to the uh, to the sea in the background here and uh, I'm going to use a fairly flat point for that and it's okay to I'm going to try to run run it this direction horizontally and uh, it's okay to have some variation in your lights and darks because that gives the impression of uh, some of these uh, waves and dark and light areas in the in the ocean here and there are going to be some areas in the ocean that are bands of really dark and some light so we're going to darken some and 
leave some of them really light. Just like this. We'll have to come back to this uh, part of the uh, seascape here after we get these branches in because obviously there's going to be pieces that are going to be showing through like in here and little areas where the where the water is going to be showing through and where the sky is going to be showing through so but this will get us started. Just like that. So little short strokes like this, they uh, they help to give the impression of uh, rough water or waves, different texture. That's what drawing is about. It's not so much drawing exactly what you see, it's being able to use little shortcuts and little, uh, almost like a shorthand, little visual effects to recreate what you see in nature. Let's see, this comes all the way down to, almost down to the, to here. So I'm gonna put in some more of the water here. Comes all the way down here. Right, there's some dark bands of, that run through the water here and some light ones and uh, I think that's the way the wind is hitting the water rough is it roughs it up in certain areas and sometimes it has to do with the depth there it might be a shallow area in there it's hard to tell from a photograph Okay, I'm going to leave that just like that. Now I'm going to work on this roof line here. And um, I think what I'll do is I think I'll add a little bit of graphite powder on here so that that'll take care of the lightest area. And then I've got to just add these little bit darker uh, shingles here. So let's just. Pick up a little bit of this graphite and uh, we'll go over the roof. Then it comes, let's see, up and through, right in through there. And then across here. Okay. All right, I'm just going to start now that the shingles run parallel with these uh, lines on the edges of the roof here. So I want to kind of follow that line when I'm doing these little walks in here. And 
things. They're just little areas like that, you know, that they're just kind of not really a, much of a pattern to them. Just kind of uh, sporadic. Just put them in like that. Some of these might be a little bit too strong. I could just take a plain cotton ball and go over them, kind of lightens them, sort of blends them so they don't stand out quite as much. And I can see right now that this water is going to have to be a lot darker in order to capture that uh, difference, that line of difference between the uh, roof line and the between the roof line and the ocean here. So I'm actually going to take a little straight edge and just darken that line right there. That's about as dark as I'm going to have to go, about as dark as that line is right there. This drawing is mostly about having the correct values, the light and darkness of a shade compared to the areas around it. Normally, uh, the ocean water gets a little fainter as you get in the distance, look in the distance, but in Maine like this, the air, the water is so blue and the air is so pure that you don't get that fading look, I mean, so much. It's like there's some little trees in the background here that are incredibly sharp detail. I know you probably can't see it, but they're, they're about the thickness of a toothpick on the on the photograph but they're incredibly sharp detail in most places that would be lost in the uh, in the kind of the haze of uh, atmospheric haze of humidity and moisture in the air and all that kind of stuff and pollutions but not up in Maine has the most purest air purest air I've ever seen. Okay, I'm going to just kind of get off of this for a second and get back on the roof here. We'll come back and darken some of that some more, but right now I'm just doing this roof area and uh, I think I'm going to need to put in a few uh, lines here that show the tiles, you know, the the, sh the, uh, the roof uh, shingles. So let me get my drawing up all the way here, on my photograph, I mean. And uh, again, it's going to run parallel with this this roof line, pretty much. And so I'm just going to indicate them just kind of lightly. don't have to do all of them because uh, like I've said before the mind the, the brain will figure in what you're doing here and it'll fill in for you in some cases that sometimes that works good and sometimes it works against you I'm gonna, let's see we get down into here Now I want to keep these areas on the side of the building that's hitting, getting the sunlight. I want to keep those clean as much as possible. So one way to do that, if you want to get a sharp edge, is put your ruler on there like that and take your eraser and go back. And it gives you a nice clean edge right there. Okay. 
okay. And we'll just uh, continue on here. There's a little area, let's see if you can see it here. There's a little area, dark area here where this these sh uh, shingles hang overhang the eave here and they, uh, or the fascia board it's called, they overhang that fascia board and so there's a little shadow there. And I wanna indicate that little shadow right there. So I'm just gonna darken that line a little bit. I got off with my line here a little. Okay. Just put in some more shingles here. Okay. Now there's also a little bit of a, well, it's not really a line, but this, there's no, uh, you don't really see that much of a line right here. But I do have some graphite that went over the, under that fascia board there, and I want to erase that because that's getting all the sun right on it. So it's going to be very light. And I can just put in some more. A lot of this is going to be hidden with the uh, with tree branches, that type of thing. So now, before I get too far down here, there's a chimney up here, right here. So I want to darken that so it stands. You know, this because this side of it is in the shade. And we'll bring that down. We'll blend that just a little bit here. I use this blending stick whenever I want to get rid of pencil lines and just kind of give an even tone to something. Okay, and then over here we've got it's much lighter because the sun is hitting these red bricks. Let's just do that. Okay, there's a little bit of a ridge or overhang right here, so I want to indicate that. Okay, there's a, uh, a weather, uh, I don't know, weather gauge or what that thing is. It's, it's not really a wind thing. It's just like a glass or metal globe. Might be a lightning uh, re repressor, lightning, lightning rod. I think that's probably what it is. And it comes up there. And then there's some brand, or there's some legs that come down here, but I'm not going to put all those in because most of it is going to be covered with the uh, tree branches. A little light reflection right there where it's hitting that. And put that in there like that. And I can blend that a little bit. Okay, now I've got to uh, start putting in some of these 
uh, clapboards, they're called. They go into the sliding here. And I'm going to indicate some of those. There's a, also a uh, drain pipe that comes down here. I want to get that. Some detail on that. And uh, probably darken some of more of this, uh, of this ocean. It's got to be darker yet than what I'm showing there. And I think I'll use this uh, Pentelic uh, woodless pencil. The, uh, this one is 9B and it's very dark. And let's see, you're not going to see a lot of waves this far back. It's going to be pretty much smooth. But that horizon line should be straight across there. So I just want to indicate that. There's nothing out there to break up that that uh, skyline there, that horizon line. Just like this. I think I'm going to start bringing some of these branches down now. Let's get them in here, and it's very dark. Uh, like that. There's a tree trunk that comes down. down into there. So I'm going to just put that in. And this is how I'm just doing these uh, these branches. It's just kind of a random pattern here. This one goes out here a little bit. So that tree trunk would be more out in here. And let's see here. It doesn't have to be exact like in the picture. Just make sure you, you, know, you want to get the same feeling, you know. like that. I'm going to pause the video here and jump ahead a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. And uh, so I'm going to be a little further along here just to speed the video up a little bit. But uh, you can see what I'm doing, uh, darkening these areas. And I'm going to go back in here with some more dark 
Now I've got to come down here and get all of this area on this side first. Okay, as you can see, I've carried this down uh, and put in quite a few blacks and I filled in the, uh, the areas where, you know, there was still some ocean showing. And uh, I'm going to come down here and fill in. This is going to be a little darker down here because this is still the ocean showing through right here. And again, just these short little strokes like that. These tree branches are just a matter of just kind of random uh, marks like that, sort of little squiggles kind of thing. But the important thing is that you get it, the darks really dark because that's what's going to make this kind of pop out. And I'm going to carry this out just a little bit further past the uh, border of the drawing here, just so. Kind of even it up a little bit here. Okay, now I'm going to go over here and work on this other side, and I think I'll just bring it down to about down to about there. That's as, then I need to go back in here and start putting in some more detail on the uh, on the house. Maybe I'll just bring it down to here so I'm I'm not uh, getting my hand over here and messing this up. So let's see. Let's just, where do I start with this? I have some branches up here. They kind of come around here like this. And it goes up like that. Actually, it goes quite a bit further. It goes out like that. And there's another one that comes up here. And uh, actually, it's down in here somewhere. And then there's one right here that kind of comes across where this lightning rod is. And there's some pretty heavy branches over in here. And let's see, this goes down into here. So I'll just start working on this area. Again, just like this, just sort of random strokes. Got quite a bit of pressure on this 9B. It's kind of up like that. I'll stop here on the video and I'll fill in some of this and then come back to it once I get down to about in this area here. Okay, as you can see, I've brought this down uh, using the same technique, just kind of, uh, it helps if you if you establish where your branches are, your main branch, and then run your your lines, your shading lines, in the direction that the pine needles would be going. I once had an art instructor that said, if you want to draw clouds, you have to become a cloud. Well, it didn't make sense to me at that time, but what he was talking about was you have to Think of a cloud. Think about how a cloud looks, how it feels, you know, what it, what it's made of. And same way with a tree. You have to think about what the tree is made of, what the individual parts are. Like, like if these branches right here, these needles are going out in this direction like that. If I was to draw them that way or draw them just straight, it wouldn't make sense. But when you take them in the direction that the branches and the needles are going, it, it makes sense. And so 
That's what I mean by, you know, thinking like, think like you're a cloud or think like you're a tree, if you're growing trees. Uh, okay, next I think I'm going to work on this area down in here. I'm just going to carry it down as I come down. That way I'm not getting my hands up in here and smearing everything up. And so I've got a little line that goes across right across here. Let me get this out of the way. It's a little line that goes right through there. It's part of that gutter system. And I'm going to indicate it. It's just a little lip that overhangs there. So it's creating a shadow. As the sun is coming in from this, the sun is coming in from this direction. And uh, that's why this tree, the trees on this side are a little lighter than the ones on this side because of the sun's coming from that direction, coming in. And uh, so uh, I've got a overhang, a shadow here, this overhang, and I want to get that in too. And so that's going to take a little broader pencil line here. And I'm going to just put that in kind of light. I don't want it to be too strong. And I'll use my ruler here as a little bit of a guide. So, so I've got a straight edge there. And then we're going to uh, blend that with the uh, shading stick. blending stub or whatever it's called. I call it a shading stick. Sometimes I call it a blending stub. Just depends on Okay, so you get that in there like that. I think I carried this just a little bit too far down here on this one side. It should be like that. And I'll take my eraser and take and erase some of that out. It's a pretty good shadow. Let's see, it doesn't come all the way out to the end there because my building comes up here. And that's my ocean showing through right here. And I think I'll put my straight edge on there to keep that line kind of straight. <clears throat> Drawing is, in this, in this uh, picture we're creating here, drawing is, is an, isn't as important as getting the values correct. If you got your values correct, it's going to look right. Unless you're way off when you're drawing. But that's the area I would concentrate most on is, is uh, getting the values right. There's a little exercise I did before I did this drawing. I took a piece of just a piece of bond paper and I laid it next to the different areas on the picture here and then tried to match that value with my pencil. You know, and so that kind of helps you get an idea of of uh, how dark you need to be and how light you need to be in certain areas. Still need to go darker with this area right down here. This is what makes that building really stand out. It's having that dark against it. It's one of the things I love about graphite and 
pencil drawing is that contrast between dark and light. Black and white, it's beautiful. It has a whole different quality than color. That's why some of the old movies are so good. They're in black and white, the old dramas. And, uh, okay. I'm going to blend that a little bit. Now I've got to put in some real light uh, siding lines here. And uh, I'm going to start those and then I will again pause the video so you don't get too bored watching them, watching me draw lines across a piece of paper. You can be more precise if you want. You can actually go down here and Make little marks so that they line up. Like, I don't know if I want to do that or not. Be like a little mark right there, and maybe one there, little ones like that. It's just something to kind of guide on so that you stay running at the same angle. Take this line out here because this is a construction line and it's kind of playing, playing with my mind here. I'm thinking that's a, a line, a roof line, and uh, it's not. And we don't have to do again, we don't have to do all of these lines, just a few of them here and there gives the impression, the right impression. And uh, Make sure these little, if you're using these little reference dots, make sure you erase those. Because uh, they'll be distracting. Okay, I'm just going to do a few more down here. All right. I've got a little bit of a roof over here. It's right there. It's pretty dark. It's almost as dark as the uh, tree branches around it so it's probably not going to stand out too much. And there's a nice big shadow underneath that. I'm not showing as much of it on my drawing as it actually shows in a photograph but we'll put it in there anyway. Like that. Okay, and then there's brush up in here, and let's see, there's a, this post right here is higher, about like that. And let's see here, I've got a uh, drain pipe that comes down. There's a shadow on this back side of it because remember the sun's coming in from that direction. So let's get that in there. A little bit of line right there. A little shadow right here. I thought that was a pipe, but it's actually a shadow created by this pipe here. And there's some more, there's some more branch of the tree branch coming down here. Let's see how, how I'm going to do this. See how I go in the direction that the pine needles would be uh, would be going. The little branches that would come off of this. Okay. And let's see here. Come on down. The 
this drain pipe. gutter pipe I guess it is it's got a little shadow behind it so I'm gonna make that kind of a soft there broad line there and it dark right there then it goes up in here okay and there's a little line right here that's also creating a shadow there and let's see this gutter pipe comes down there and I'm going to carry some of these siding lines right over there to the edge of that now there's a board that comes down here on the corner board finishes that corner off and so that doesn't get a uh, siding doesn't go all the way out to the end here it just stops at that board. Actually, the, in actual reality, it goes under the board, but for the purposes of drawing, it just stops there. And make sure you don't have any pencil marks in there. Okay. All right, here we are so far. Now I'm going to come back up and I got to add that shadow underneath this little hang right here. And I'm going to put a little line there, even though there isn't one. I'm going to add a little bit of an overhang line just to kind of explain that a little better. Define that edge a little bit. Okay, and then see that side of that building is right, overhang is right there, that little. dormer or whatever that's called i'm not an architect i don't know what that's called okay i gotta get that line out that line out now there's a shadow underneath this because again it's created by uh, that overhang so i just want to put a line there a little shade that a little bit okay it's not going to stand out that much from the uh, from the trees just like that okay all right we're coming down getting down to uh, this area here and uh, there's two windows here one here and then there's one right here that and this uh this little building the roof comes down right about there and there's there's brush and weeds all in here so see i think i've got to bring this down a little bit more actually it's down to about that's a little bit too far I'll bring this uh, overhang down here just a little bit further into about there and just going to shade that in just like that and then blend it a little bit get rid of some of those pencil marks And see, I think I can start to darkening some of these areas in the window here. There's a part of the sash goes across here. Oh, I don't want that. And let's see. There's millions that come down here. And they come down here too. I'm just going to do a little bit of this so you can see what I'm doing here. 
and then I'll move on to another area. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit under control as far as time goes. So if it's just something that's repetitious, I try to move the video ahead. I think I'm going to put in these uh, fence posts here too. There's a dark side back here on this side because remember which direction that light is coming from. And we'll color this in. I keep saying color it in, but it's not coloring it because it's black and white. So I should use a little, little wider tip here. It's uh, easier to blend with it. You don't have so many sharp pencil lines in there that I have to get rid of. Let's see, this is right here. And there's one over here that you're really seeing the actually as you get over here closer you see a little bit more of the back side of these so I'm just going to broaden that a little bit and then this one you really see the back side of it that's all you see and a little bit like that Now it's time to start with some of these weeds down here and uh, I think I'm going to take out these construction lines because they're just going to get in the way there. approach these uh, these weeds is that I want to get the uh, I want to get these pieces that are sticking up the branches that are protruding out of my, from the mass here that are highlighted against this light background and then I'm just going to kind of uh, put in values that that kind of represent these masses like this is a fairly light value in here there's a darker value that comes in through here and then down here and the light value there. And then I can start to pick out some, with the uh, kneaded eraser or pink curl, I can start to pick out some highlights in here and some of these little features. All right, so now I want to put in some, uh, some of these uh, little weeds and things up here. Just kind of a little, you need a sharp pencil point for that. have to be precise just you want to catch that feeling of uh, that those are weeds there sticking up and there's some there's some right up in here take a, just the uh, broad side of my pencil here and I'm just going to put in some values here. Try to get this light value in first. And it helps to go in the direction that the uh, 
the plants are kind of growing, they're sort of growing down an angle like this, so I'm kind of angling my brush strokes like that too. There's a post back here that I didn't put in, so I should put that in. It's kind of in the dark background there, it gets lost on the weeds, as they say. Okay. some of that light value and uh, it helps if you get all the uh, eraser crumbs off your paper when you're doing a blending like this or a big area like this. Now I want a little darker value in here. See when you run it at an angle like that it already starts to look like some weeds and, and stuff. So, right here now, it looks like there's some that kind of go that way, so I'm going to change my direction here, and they kind of come down into here. Just come all the way over like that. And let's see, they come down almost down to here. And then I've got my light value again. Right down here. Okay, well, let's do a little bit of blending. I don't mind if some of these lines show. In fact, I want them to show somewhat, but I want to get some solid area here so I can pick out some of these plants. Start putting in a little bit more detail. I can probably use some of this graphite powder for that too. That would help. It's nice for covering a big area. Boy, this stuff can really be messy. Let's see here. Now I'll take the uh, kneaded eraser, or not the kneaded eraser, the uh, pink pearl eraser, and I'm going to pick out some of these uh, plants. See how that works? It's so nice. You can almost you can just draw with this eraser. You know, it's really nice. My problem is it kind of loads up with the graphite really fast, so you have to constantly be changing the, the surface. Either get another eraser or take some sandpaper and kind of erase it out.
that's the only problem with it. See how it loads up with the graphite? Whereas your kneaded eraser doesn't do that quite so bad. But see how you can create little flowers and plants in here in this complicated area. It's actually not complicated at all. It's actually quite simple. Just take them down. Just want some variety, some texture. So if the eye sees something going on, thinks there's something going on there, you know. Just doesn't look like a big flat space. And I can go back in with some really dark in here, a few places. Nature is full of random, randomness. I don't know if that's a word, but. Nature doesn't like a void, and it's all full of all kinds of random things. Just do like that. Now I can take a darker pencil and uh, go back in and try to get some of these real dark little patches in here in between the plants here. Try not to take out those white ones that you, you know already put in there but just kind of around them a little bit you know like that. just makes them stand out a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to do a whole lot more on this. I think it's got kind of the, uh, the idea of what I'm doing. And uh, let's see. I do need to bring this down a little further. Whenever I draw, I always have about two or three erasers handy so I can get to one when I need it. such a hard edge right there. It's a little softer shadow. So I'm going to take my broader pencil point here and just kind of go in there. 
hand in here to soften that a little bit. There is a feature back in here. It's actually a frame for a bell. A bell sits down in here, but uh, it doesn't really show up very much, and so I don't think it's necessary to put it in. template here you can get a little metal there's lots of different things you can use just a little sharp edge of some sort so you can erase against it and it gives you a nice clean edge right there Okay, I think that finishes that drawing. Um, I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. And join me for the next video. I think I'm going to do something with some uh, people in it and some pets, some animals, something like that. So uh, join me then. <laughs>